Hi, and welcome. It's Patrick Donahoe. Since 2007, we have had the tremendous opportunity to work with thousands of clients to help implement the perpetual wealth strategy and set up uh, their wealth maximization account. Now, we get lots of questions and we have addressed a lot of those in this initial introductory series of the podcast, and we're going to address another one today, and it has to do with having multiple policies and how to manage them. Clients often come with the concern of not wanting to lose sight of why they set these valuable assets up in the first place and wanting to continue maximizing their their value. So I thought about two guys that uh, would do a tremendous job explaining how they manage their own policies, but also teach their clients how to manage theirs. And so you're going to learn by some of my my best guys, uh, Will Street and Chad Hansen, and they're going to take over this uh, this episode and share with you best practices, uh, tips, advice, uh, as well as their real life stories and also stories from, uh, from their clients about uh, how they've done that and ultimately mastered this idea of, of policy management. So without further uh, delay, uh, Will and Chad, go ahead and take it away. Welcome to the Perpetual Wealth Strategy Podcast. Hey, thanks, Pat. We're uh, we're excited to be here. Uh, again, I'm Chad Hanson. Mm-hmm. This is Will Street. Uh, we're wealth strategists here at Paradigm Life. Uh, just two of the the many great strategists here uh, doing strategic wealth management. Um, but uh, I think we were we were paired up, you know, by chance, really, to to do this episode. But but it happens to be, I think, the perfect marriage. Yeah. Uh, Will and I just just kind of high level here have very bit different backgrounds. So Will came from another profession, uh, professional industry, and and kind of came into paradigm from the consumer side. Right. Um, I was working for the big big bad wolf that we call Wall Street, and uh, <laughs> kind of came in from the professional advisor side. Right. Um, so so those uh, unique perspectives I think will will go together today in this episode as we as we talk. Um, so so Will, I wanted to ask you. So your background, you know, like I said, is so different from mine, but mm-hmm. it's so intriguing. Uh, you had, you know, you're married, you're starting your family, you, you start this great professional career, right. you're doing great, and all of a sudden you you pull a 180 and take a total different yeah. direction. Yeah, oh, so, total so, 180. So tell me about that. What, what happened? Yeah, so I, so I uh, I practiced law, right? Yeah. My, my profession was uh, as an attorney. Yeah. Um, and man, you know, coming out of law school, I really had my dream job. Uh, I mean, that, that was how I would have described it and did describe it to friends and family and, man, you must be excited. And oh, I've got my dream job. Literally, that's how I felt. Um, and so I was really excited to, to jump in and have a long and fruitful and productive career, career as an attorney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I loved it. Hmm. Well, not long after I started, I, I uh, started with the, the firm that I was with, a good uh, big regional law firm uh, in 2007. Right. And then, you know, the wheels started to kind of come off uh, in yeah. 07, 08. Right. As if you think about the, the real estate market yep. at that point, it was kind of going over yep. the mountain and down the other side. Yeah. Yep. The bubbles bursting <laughs> yeah, and, yep. you know, the market is in absolute free fall. And, and yeah. so I actually had the advantage, I think, of being, you know, a kind of a younger guy just starting out. I really didn't have a lot to lose in you know, with what was happening in the market, I wasn't really losing much. I had student loan debt and hadn't saved and, you know, I was yeah. just getting started. Right. So yeah. I was in a, was- a pretty fortunate position. Um, but what happened was I looked around at other people, you know, attorneys in the firm, uh, staff, you know, people who had spent 20, 25, 30 years saving and doing what it is that we're told to do. And they're the ones that are experiencing the brunt of that market crash, yeah. right. Who are having to make some some really heart wrenching decisions as to whether they can retire or not yeah. because of the values that they were losing. Probably because if I can put words in your mouth here, yeah. I, I guess because their entire wealth strategy was throw your money in your four hundred one k plan. Exactly, right? it was all. I mean, it, everything hinged on what the market was doing. Yeah. Right. And so for me, that was a fortunate opportunity to observe a very clear red flag. Right. That man, I I don't know that I want to go down that road because. If I'd ask, you know, I'd I'd ask other people, hey, what what would you do if you were me? And they'd say, oh, you're young. Good thing you're young. You know, write it out. Write it out. Buy and hold. And for me, I was like, well, that didn't work for you. That didn't work for you. (laughs) That's bad advice. I don't know that I have a lot of faith in that answer. And so I started to just kind of look. I felt like, man, there's got to be other 
strategies out there. There's got to be other ways to strategically manage your wealth, right? And so right around that time period, I read a classic Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, great book. Which completely expanded my horizon. You know, I went from thinking that the only way that you could have wealth is so long as it's a security, right? And it's tied to a stock of some kind. All of a sudden, I started to think in terms of different asset classes, yeah. passive income, cash flow, those types of things. Yeah, new terms. New terms that yeah. all of a sudden were completely that, just weren't there before. And I was like, wow, light bulb goes off. There's a whole world out here that I am not aware of. And I just, I, I was, I poured myself into it. But as I as I learned about it and and really knew that I wanted to, let's say, for example, acquire real estate, cash flowing real estate so that I could have passive income, um, I felt like, man, everything that I'm doing in my 401k is impacting my ability to do all of this other stuff that I feel like I need to do. And, that would and, actually and maybe, insulate and maybe me. Maybe why so? I mean, mm-hmm. tell, tell me the, the, the kind of... Uh, the building blocks of a 401k yeah. is you put your money in yep. and is it liquid? No, not, not at all. <laughs> it's stuck till you're it's 59 stuck. and a half, right? Yep. I mean, it's, it's the worst place you can put yep. money if you're trying to find opportunities, right? Exactly. Um, and, and how much control do you have? Over Zero. It? Zero, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean it literally, I had, as I was setting up my 401k, I think I, I may have had 15 different choices yeah. in terms of, you know, target date retirement funds or this mutual fund or that mutual fund. It's not like I had this, you know, diverse selection of- yeah of choices. And the reality is money goes in, money stays in. Money's not doing anything other than sitting in that one and fixed it can position. potentially grow or potentially disappear. Exactly. Yeah. So as I, as I started to continue to, to, to learn and, and read and study, fortunately, I made the connection with Paradigm Life. A good friend of mine uh, was a, a client and eventually became an advisor here. Um, and he sort of brought me in and, and said, Hey, you, you got to check this stuff out. And yeah. so as I started to, to jump into what it is that we do, which really is strategic wealth management, right? Absolutely. There is strategy involved Absolutely. instead of just eh, put it there and hope and pray for the best, right? Cross your fingers and wait it out. Yeah. I felt like bingo, this is what I'm looking for, right? Absolutely. Gives me the ability to actually save and then have the opportunity to utilize that savings in a way that is meaningful to me, which is slowly and systematically acquiring assets to cash flow. That Beautiful. was my priority. Yeah. So I love it. Yeah. Thanks but it, sure. and now you, as you mentioned, you to- come totally from a different. completely yeah. different angle. Yeah. So so I started uh, back in 1999 mm-hmm. in uh, in Wall Street. So I, I was a stockbroker, registered investment advisor, retirement planning counselor, estate planning counselor, registered fiduciary. Uh, I was a, a group benefits specialist, employee benefits consultant. So I was the guy going out there to companies, right. setting up 401k plans. Right. Okay? right. I was the guy trying to convince people that they needed to invest their money with me and pay ticket charges and trade charges and management fees and all, all these expenses to manage right. their wealth. And unfortunately, I did that, but uh, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you think about 1999, what was sure. happening? I oh, mean, we, we had Y2K, y- Y2K and then dot com and the bubble burst. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So that's, so that kind of sets the stage. So, um, when I started in the business, things were rocking right at the end of 1999. Yeah. We were doing great. You know, we were, we could throw a dart at the wall street journal, pick any stock and it would just go and it's crazy. Work, right. Yeah. And it, it, that was nice for the first year. And then all of a sudden things changed. Yeah. Marcus started to slide. Uh, we tried everything we could to revamp the portfolios and, you know, we'd, we'd done everything right. We had uh, we'd diversified the portfolios out as far as we possibly could. Uh, we were making tweaks and adjustments, uh, but but we we were really kind of powerless other than that. I mean, we, we, right. we'd done everything we could and we still lost money. So I was charging people fees to lose Oof. their money. And so, that's painful as a it, consumer. It was painful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was painful, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I wasn't strategically building and managing wealth. I was strategically sure. losing wealth. Right, right. Right. And not cool. Yeah. Um, and then 9-11 hit. Okay. Right. We, we made some changes. Markets going up again. We're thinking, okay, we can do this. Bam. Yeah. 40 to 60% of our portfolios were just gone overnight. Wow. And again, completely powerless. Yeah. I could do nothing. And I felt yep. awful. Right. Right. Right then and there, I decided this has got to change. Right. Okay. I'm, I've got to do something else. There, This is not working. Fortunately, I had... Uh, uh, back in 99, 2000, I had uh, been convinced 
uh, that I needed to buy some permanent life insurance for sure. my family. Okay? Right. So I did buy some life insurance policies on my wife and I. And uh, over that first decade in the business, I looked back and I was amazed. My top performing asset class was my life insurance. Oh. I was like, this should not be happening. <laughs> no. I'm a stockbroker. I'm a yeah. registered investment advisor. I could beat that these life things. life insurance. This, yuck. this stinking life insurance stuff. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. But it was my absolute wow. best performing asset class. Wow. I could not beat it. It was just mind blowing. Right. I was like, wow, there's something to yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I started doing the same thing, reading the Rich Dad Poor Dad and going yeah. down all these different uh, avenues and and really changing and morphing my career. Sure. And uh, and kind of doing the same for my clients who I right. unfortunately taken down the wrong path. I had to kind of say, come, hey, back, come, on back. come <laughs> back, come back, please, please come back. You know, most of them didn't, unfortunately. They're yeah. like, you burned me. I'm not coming back. And I don't blame them. Sure. You know, yes. Yeah. You know, that's I was part of that Wall Street machine. Sure. And again, I, my bad. Yeah. You know? But yeah, I mean, you were doing the best that you I, could. I did the best I could. Conventional I, yeah, wisdom. Traditional conventional wisdom it just, just doesn't work. work. Yeah. yeah. Strategic wealth management is not. Throw money in some stocks right. and cross your fingers and hope it works. Exactly. That's what traditional advice is, but it, it just doesn't this work. Doesn't As you work. said, you know, people are not able to retire on time or in style. Right. They just, they're not. If you look at the average American, they can't do it. Right. Why? Because all their money is in this 401k plan that they have yep. no control over. Yep. The market has just been pounding them over and over and over, and they spend their entire time trying to dig out of the hole. Yep. They're not making any progress. Right. Okay. That's not the way to build wealth. No. No. Nope. So sorry for the long intro there, guys, but no, I think, I, that, I think that's that, 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 that valuable. Good. Yeah. But, but yeah, the, the topic today really is now that we've got these life insurance policies, sure. what do we do with them? Right. And I think for, furthermore, that topic is what do you do in the short term? If, if you're, yeah. if you uh, if your wealth strategy is, Hey, what am I going to do with this now, right. next year, the year after the year after, or if your strategy is more long-term, yep. you know, looking back on mine, mine was a little more of a long-term strategy. Sure. I didn't touch my policies for 10 years. Right, right. right. Now they're 20 years old and I can do all kinds of things with them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so I think that brings another perspective here that we want to touch on. Yeah. So uh, maybe yours is a little more short. Sure. So, I can speak to that. So yeah, yeah. Why don't you tell, tell me what you've been doing about that? Yeah. So, so kind of maybe continuing the story from where I just left yeah. off. Once I, once all of this stuff became clear and apparent to me, I mean, it, it, it was a no brainer, right. To make the, the shift. And so what I did, I mean, I was starting and, and funding that very first policy that I did, um, again, I had the Kiyosaki kind of philosophies in the back of my mind that not, not only do I want to position this capital in something like the wealth maximization account, which protects it, preserves it, allows it to safely and, and, and predictably grow, but because we have access to it, I felt like bingo, there's my answer to be able to preserve and protect and grow in a steady way, but at the same time, use it to acquire these other types of assets that I've, you know, that I've read about and I've had my eye on, but now I feel like I can actually do it, right? right? Strategically, you know, building a wealth plan, building a, uh, you know, something that I'm putting together piece by piece, right? And so when I funded my first policy, literally within two weeks, I had acquired my first two rental properties. That is awesome. Yeah. Within two weeks. Yeah. So I, uh, since that time, so maybe instant access, instant to, your cash. access to my yeah. cash, Beautiful. uh, instantly creating cash flow and then taking that positive cash flow and having it funnel right back into my policy towards the loan balance that I used to acquire the property. So it wasn't just buying a policy. Nope. It's now managing life insurance. Exactly. Policies. Yep. And, and putting that as part of your strategic wealth strategies. Exactly. Okay? Okay. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all, all of a sudden I had this, I, I refer to it as my opportunity fund and I've got this pool of capital that, Hey, if I'm not using it, that's okay. It's still productive, but as opportunities come along, I can strategically, you know, keep an eye out and deploy that capital as those opportunities present themselves. So, you know, long story short over the past mm, five years, uh, I'm up to 19 properties now. So Sweet. I have 17 single family homes and two commercial buildings. Beautiful. And cash flowing, uh, on average, 14 to 15% cash on cash return each year. Wow. Not bad. Funneling right back into that bottom layer. So yeah, that was my, that was my short term. I got it. I want to get this out, get it rolling and start to piece by piece, build a portfolio of cash flowing properties. Love it. So now I want to ask you a question, a follow up sure. question here, if I can. You said just a second ago when I when I funded my first yes. policy, uh -huh. 
So a lot of times when, when people talk about their, you know, managing their life insurance mm-hmm. policy or policies, they're yeah. talking in multiples, right? Sure, sure. So, so tell me how many policies you have now. Uh, I have four. So okay. between my wife and me, we have four. Okay. Um, and, you know, I, I, think of, I think of each policy as being like a bucket, right? So mm-hmm. when, you, when you create that bucket initially, it has capacity, right? It's, it has a certain structure. But more importantly, it has certain capacity. And so you can fill it up to a certain point. Um, and if, as your income increases or as your expenses decrease, right. As your, Mm -hmm. as your ability to fund changes over time, you may find, and I think this is a very common thing for our clients. They may find that they need to expand capacity. And I found that to be true. An additional. Exactly. So within, I'd say within about the first, maybe three or four years was typical for me. And I think, you know, in speaking with my clients seems to be pretty typical where, you just find that, hey, that bucket, that's awesome and it's working well. It's let's already maximized. Bucket. Yeah. Let's add another add bucket another and expand capacity. Yeah, so, beautiful. And, and longer term perspective, because you've got a little bit more runway right. than I do. How many yeah. policies so do you have? I now have 10. Wow. So basically- I got some work to do. Over the last 20 years, about, yeah. about every other year, I've just had another policy. Yeah. Because like you said, I've filled up that bucket, maximized the policy to its fullest extent, and then wanted to do more. Yeah. So, so I now have a policy on all four of my children. I have awesome. four policies on myself and I have two on my wife. Wow. That's so there's great. My, there's my 10. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and how are you using those? Yeah, Cause right. you've got a daughter in college, right? I, I do. Okay. Yeah, so, perfect. so yeah, people always ask, yeah. why, why do you have policies on your kids? Sure. Sure. Right? And that was kind of an afterthought for me and, yeah. uh, in the beginning. I just thought oh, I'll just may, may as well, uh, may as well perfect, yeah. protect the whole family. Right. But now, man, 20 years looking back, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking these were the best things I ever did. Right. Uh, I now have, you know, this one-year-old that I bought the policy on, you know, 19 years ago yeah. is now in her second year of college. Wow. Okay. So I'm using her policy. I used it to buy her a car. I'm using it to pay for her college sure. expenses. And uh, and the reason I did that over a state-sponsored 529 I was going to say, yeah. gee, I, mean, gee, I, well, I can't believe broker. you don't have a 529 <laughs> I plan. I know. Especially being a broker, right? <laughs> I should have had one of those. I yeah. was setting those up for my clients, but I didn't do it myself. Yeah. Because, you, know, you know. <laughs> it is what it is, but uh, but yeah. So so the differences are tremendous. So you yeah. know, a five twenty nine plan. If you if you put money into a five twenty nine plan for within your state, regardless of what state it is, they all work very similarly. Uh, how much access and control do you have over those accounts? Oh, hardly any. Zero. Yeah. Right. Can you use it for off campus housing? No. No. Can you use it to buy them a car? Nope. Can you use it to pay for their weddings? No. No. You're stuck. You're stuck. It is only to be used for college tuition. Yeah. Period. And maybe books and fees, sure. depending on how you use it. And I even, fe- so I had a 529 yeah. plan in the beginning yeah, before okay. ma- making the transition. I was so disappointed because I thought, oh, but tax advantages, right? Contributions, tax deductible, mm, a Not portion so is, yeah, but portion. that's it. And yeah. I was like, man, this isn't what I thought that, I, yeah. that it was. Now so. these policies I've set up for my kids, yeah. I can use the money tax free, whatever risk you want. free, completely open-ended. Yeah. I can do whatever I want with them. Yep. And, and I just thought. That is so much better. <laughs> this is there's no way I'm doing a 529 plan right. locking up my money like that when I can have all this access yeah. and control and I can use it throughout life to do so many things. So many th- and, and the thing that I think is yeah. so cool about about your story is it's your daughter's policy that is funding right. her college Correct. education. How cool is That's that? That's way cool. Yeah. What what a sense of ownership of just her education and and all of that. Yeah. That's so cool. So right now, so my plan is, so I, I bought all the policies in my name. Obviously, mm-hmm. I, I'm the owner. I'm the premium payer. I'm the I'm I'm funding it. I control it. And then when she gets married someday, sure. I'll assign ownership over to her. And now she can change the beneficiary to her new spouse and her yeah. children. And she takes it over and away she goes. Exactly. So now it's oh, like a, it's a it's a multi generation right. plan here. Right. So we've taken a simplified wealth strategy to you know, strategic wealth management to now managing these life insurance policies into the future. Right. And doing phenomenal things with them. Incredible. Right? Yeah. Uh, I just, I just bought a new home too. I think I, exactly. I you, we yeah. just, I just moved in last week. It's been crazy, but same thing. I used my, my 10 life insurance policies as collateral, basically. Yeah. Uh, you can use it as business collateral, personal collateral, whatever to, sure. to secure the new deal and get me into the house. Yeah. So, you know, I've used my policies for all kinds of things, Right. you know, paying my staff, buying laptops, iPhones, equipment sure. to, you know, buying businesses and real estate. And it's been a phenomenal tool. Yeah. Yep. And that's something I did not realize early on. Right. So you were fortunate. You came in, you got it done right here at Paradigm, right? <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I, yeah. I was, I was buying mine, you know, in, in the kind of secondary markets in Wall Street and, and uh, I didn't really know how to use my policy. Right. So the first 10 years, I just let it sit there. Yeah. 
right? Um, you know, I funded it, but I didn't do anything with it. Right. So it's only been the last decade that I've really started seeing how amazing these things are. Right. And really taking advantage of their full potential. Right. And it's just been so eye-opening and amazing. And and now I share that with my clients and, and help them do the same thing. And, and you know, some of them are very fortunate to get it done right out of college, right? Yep. Their first careers. Others are doing it in their 60s and 70s. And, you know, it, it's okay. And it works. You know, it still yeah. works. Um, you know, everyone always says, where were you 20 years ago? Right. Exactly. <laughs> And unfortunately, 20 years ago, I would have steered him in the wrong direction. <laughs> so I say, you wouldn't want to meet me yeah. 20 years ago. 10 years yeah. ago, yes. But, uh, but yeah, t- so that's really, the, that's really the common theme you hear is, man, I should have done this yeah. 10 years ago, 20 years ago. But, you know, don't beat yourself up over no, it. No, no. Start now. Just, yep, start now. And, do the and, best that you can from yeah, here. Manage these life insurance policies to, to like we said, we, we, mm-hmm. to strategically grow your wealth. Exactly. Do wealth management. From a whole other level, from a yep. whole other plane now, looking into it with completely different eyes. Exactly. Or, you know, with a, with a paradigm shift. Sure. Hey, there we hey, go. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, that's kind of the the uh, the shift here is what, what we do as well strategists is we help people do that. Yep. You know, we're going we're gonna to teach you and educate you. Right. And this is really how we're going to change your life through right. education. And then the, the paradigm shift is when your your mind is finally blown and your eyes are open to see that. Hey, this stuff really works. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not just fluff. It's not just rhetoric. It, it actually works. Right. It's the only place you can preserve and protect wealth. Right. I can't do it anywhere else. No. Nope. And I've seen it all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I tried it all. Right. And I failed. Right. With all the tools, all the resources, all the training, all the education I had in Wall Street, I was completely powerless to truly preserve and protect wealth. Right. And it, it, it's just, it's crazy to think about that. Right. The vast majority of Americans today are still in that In scenario. that same mindset. They have right. advisors who they think are managing their wealth. Right. But they're doing exactly the same yep. thing I was doing 20 years ago. Yep. They're throwing Throw them into the some dark. diversified yep. portfolio of mutual funds, ETF, stocks and bonds, and maybe some other derivatives and saying, you're in it for the long haul, buy and hold. Yep. Weather the storm. Weather yep. the storm. Mm-hmm. You'll be okay. And that story is not working. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's it's a it's a travesty, really. Yeah. It, and and the thing that I think is uh, is interesting about again, kind of making maybe coming full circle, the what you talked about in the beginning was the differences in our perspectives. Yeah. And the reality is, is it is both work. Whether you have a short term focus. There, the beauty of the of the policy, the beauty of of creating a wealth maximization account and having accessible cash value means that if the opportunity comes along, you can use it. Yeah. But then you don't lose sight of the long term perspective either. You know, as you need to expand capacity, as the size of that original bucket becomes inadequate because income is increasing, discretionary ability to capitalize and mm-hmm. set aside and save improves or increases expand the size of, uh, of, uh, or add an additional bucket, yeah. I should say. And, and maybe even some of that is comfort level too. Comfort you know, we have level, some clients sure. that say, well, I want to start small. I don't want to put everything on this. Well, right. okay, that's fine. Absolutely. You can always add another policy, yep. right? You Scale it up. as you. <laughs> and I would say just to that point too, for me, a lot of my conviction came after I funded that first policy. It was yeah. kind of this, you almost take this step of faith. And yeah. when you discover that, Hey, there's my foot landed on solid ground, yeah, you know, after taking rewarded. my faith was rewarded <laughs> by, yeah, it's almost like, you know, Indiana Jones in the last crusade oh, yeah, where he steps out. Yeah. The leap of there. faith from the lion's mouth. And then the pathway, you know, pathway appears. Shows up. I felt like that was true with yeah. me. And so it was like, man, that, that faith and the commitment and what it is that we do was absolutely galvanized from that point yeah. on. And so then again, thinking about it from a longer term perspective, I want to get where you are, which is, policies on, on kids. I mean, we're, we're getting there, but I'm, you know, in a, my runway is not quite as long as yours at this point, but, um, but I'll get there. And so whether as a client, uh, whether you're a shorter term perspective or a longer term perspective, man, just stay the course and it works. It really does. Uh, and I guess I just encourage anyone who's watching or listening here, talk to your wealth strategist and, and just discuss, Hey, how do we really manage these life insurance policies? What do we do with them? right? Right. Hey, I'm thinking about this investment or that yeah. investment. 
how does this policy loan work? Yeah. You know, we, we can, we're here to do that. Absolutely. You know, we, we don't just set it up and kick you to the curb. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. That's right? one of my, I can genuinely say that's one of my favorite conversations to have. When yeah. you get an email or a phone call or something from an existing client and they say, Hey, I have this opportunity. Can I run something past you Yeah. to have that conversation Beautiful. and to help and offer a perspective and to see them take it and do it for the first time and kind of experience that, that same leap yeah, of faith yeah, from the lion's mouth. <laughs> it's awesome. It is so awesome. rewarding. It yeah. I awesome. love it. Uh, yeah. And that's what we're here for. So use us and abuse us. Absolutely. You know, we're, we, we love it when people call us and ask us questions. You know, I get all kinds of weird questions. People call me from the, the lot at the car dealer. Hey, I'm thinking about buying this car. <laughs> should I How should this? I finance this? I'm like, well, it's not, you know, it's not exactly what I do, but it is kind of exactly what I do. <laughs> right. And I kind of give them some pointers and, and that's fine. We love it. So, so please use us and abuse us. That's what we're here for. Um, you know, we, we pride ourselves on education. Uh, we pride ourselves on customer service. Uh, we've got a huge staff here behind us to, mm -hmm. to take care of, to, to take care of you and uh, really to support us Absolutely. in this endeavor. And uh, Patrick's done just an amazing job. So kudos to you, Patrick, you're the man. So just a, maybe a quick side note, quick, yeah. uh, maybe just a, something that's relevant, I think, as part of this conversation is policy loans, right? Oh, yeah. Because that yeah, definitely. For, for most people, when we're thinking about, you know, opportunity fund and using me maybe as an example here, it's the policy loan that you're, that you're using, that you're taking advantage of to acquire, let's say the, the piece of real estate, mm -hmm. right? Or, and I assume it's probably policy loan that is uh, uh, covering the college tuition and, and that sort of thing on yeah. your end. Yeah. So maybe let's talk just quickly about some of those best practices around yeah. taking policy loans and how we go about that. Yeah. So, so I guess maybe for me, best mm -hmm. practices you know, a you don't have to worry. You don't have to stress about paying yeah. it back. So, so relax is the first concept. Yeah, okay. you, you're not getting in a, <laughs> yeah. a, a monthly statement right. saying you know, it's not like a credit card bill yeah. where you have to pay this amount every month or you're right. you're toast, right? So, so the first thing is just just relax. Know that right. you've got you got as long of a runway as you need, okay? right? Uh, but with that in mind, I have this sense of urgency inside of me to sure. to pay that back as quickly as possible. Absolutely, right? yeah. So, you know, my my. I don't know if there's a rule of thumb, but I mean, my, my general policy loans typically don't last longer than a year. Sure. You know, I, I buy a property or buy a business or buy a, an item or a car or whatever. And I take out the policy loan and I try and pay it off as soon as I possibly can. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Cause then I freed up all that cash to use again, again. for the next opportunity. Right. Right. So, right. I mean, is that what you would find as well? Yeah. So what I would say, maybe for me, it depends a little bit on maybe the purpose of the policy loan. So That's for great, example, good if the way that I kind of distinguish it is, if the purpose of the policy loan is consumptive, right? It's in other words, I'm using it towards something that isn't going to generate a direct rate of return, like a car, like a car. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's you know, it's depreciable assets. Yep. It, it's not cash flowing. It's not generating positive return. Then I follow. I absolutely do that. Do that right. Um, the the alternative would be if I'm using it towards something that is generating a positive return or is cash flowing. Like then what I or real like estate. a business mm -hmm. or real estate, then what I've done is I allow the cash flow or the return being generated by the investment to dictate the speed at which the policy loan is paid back. So take a policy loan to acquire a property, the property cash flows, I allow the cash flow to pay back the investment. And so what what that has done uh, for me is I kind of create this closed loop system, right? Where mm -hmm. policy loan allows you to create a stream of income, stream of income funnels back into the policy towards the outstanding loan balance. And so by doing it that way, I'm just letting that, so, that loop just continue to spin and the policy yeah. loan's getting paid back. So the cash flow from the asset yes. is what is paying back your policy loan. Exactly. So yep. it's not diverting or detracting mm -hmm. from our family budget. Yep. It's not coming out of your pocket. Not out coming of your out of my out pocket. Of your income. My right. wife isn't feeling any you know, level of anxiety thinking about, well, I, I wasn't planning for this in the yeah, budget. Here's you know? a huge expense. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it, it's self-contained and the income from the asset is paying it back. It's beautiful. I so love there's, and, and the bottom line is like you said, it, it's so flexible. That's the beauty of the policy. Line. Yeah. It's so flexible. Um, and, and maybe another key point there would be we can help again, yeah. we can help. We want to be and strive to be the one-stop shop where as you want to request a policy loan, we can help mm -hmm. with that. We have support team who request policy loans, loan proceeds are deposited electronically into your, your bank account so that they're immediately available to be used. Um, I think it's good, you know, just as a, maybe a best practice, um, you know, keep track 
of uh, of your outstanding policy loan balance. And generally, mm-hmm. you know, the insurance companies, carriers will help with that, obviously. But yep. um, it's just a good idea to to know and you know, kind of know where you're at. Yep. Um, but it's very they're flexible. Most offer the ability to make payments towards your policy loan online now yep. or over the phone. Or over the phone. So really, it's just super easy, do. super flexible. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Appreciate that insight. Absolutely. So Chad and Will, thank you both for uh, for being here, uh, for uh, taking your time and sharing your your wisdom and your expertise. Uh, and thanks to all of you guys who have listened and taken the time to uh, expand your knowledge uh, to best utilize what you have established here at Paradigm Life. So don't forget to visit our website, paradigmlife.net, for all of this episode's content, as well as other helpful resources that you can uh, utilize as you move forward to continually uh, maximize the, the benefits within the perpetual wealth strategy. So it's hard to believe, but our, our next episode is uh, the final in this welcome series. Uh, we've covered tons of information and uh, the most uh, fundamental uh foundational advice uh, in, in, you know, about 11 episodes already. Uh, and uh, with myself and all the other wealth strategists, you know, uh, unpacking uh, all of the experience, the wealth of knowledge that exists here. Uh, and I hope you guys have, uh, have enjoyed it. So for our final episode, we wanted to let uh, some of our clients do the talking. So next week, you're going to hear from several fellow clients of Paradigm Life. Uh, they'll be joining us to share their, their personal experiences, their successes, Uh, in applying this uh, strategy to their own unique uh, set of circumstances uh, to help them achieve their goals. Uh, It could be small business, investing, real estate investing, uh, family finances, uh, legacy planning, uh, family offices, growing, you know, just personal wealth, uh, but also planning for uh, potential part-time or or full-time retirement. Uh, We'll get to hear directly from from them. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy this uh, this episode. So we'll see you uh, you then. And thanks again for all of your support.